Number 58. A soft tennis ball is dropped onto a hard floor from a height of 1.5 meters and rebounds to a height of 1.10 meters. A. Calculate its velocity just before it strikes the floor. All right. So uh, this problem is actually very similar to number uh, 56. So if you want additional practice on a problem like this, please be sure to check out my other video on uh, number 56. So soft tennis ball is being dropped. Right? So since it's being dropped, we know the initial velocity here is going to be zero meters per second. And it's going to be dropped and eventually it's going to hit the floor. Right? So it's going to travel down. And it says that the height of the a ball is 1.50 meters above the ground. Okay, and then it says it rebounds to a height of 1.1, but we don't need that for part A. So we know since the ball is uh, being dropped and now it's in air, we do know that the acceleration um, of this ball is going to be equal to that of gravity, which is negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Um, and now from here, right, also don't forget that this is the displacement of 1.50. And now uh, we can just simply uh, plug in, we can find an equation now um, and plug in our variables to find our final velocity. So remember, I need an equation with displacement, initial, acceleration, and final. And it looks like equation number four will fit the bill. So for letter A, let's write that. Final velocity is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2a times the displacement. Now the final velocity is what we're looking for, so that's my unknown. The initial velocity is zero. The acceleration is negative 9.80. And the displacement here is going to be negative 1.50. Uh, be careful because the object is moving down in the negative y direction, therefore its displacement must be negative. So let's just plug in the values into our calculator. So 2 times 9, negative 9.8, uh, times negative 1.5, it works out to be 29.4, right? So 29.4, take the square root of both sides, we get rid of the square, and remember, whenever you take the square root of a number, it's plus or minus. Now take the square root of that, so it comes out to 5.42, 5.42, that's meters per second. Now we have to think about uh, what sign is it, positive or negative, what do you think? Think about the direction in which the ball is traveling in this frame. Right, it's traveling down, so therefore it would be a negative velocity. All right, so let me just erase these signs, and I'm just going to put the negative um, version in there. So that should be the final velocity uh, for part A. Let's take a look now at part B. All right, so now it says calculate its velocity just after it leaves the floor on its way back up. So this is where the um, 1.10 meters is going to be important. So let's just draw a um, uh, let's just draw another picture. Okay. So this is for letter B over here. So again, after it hits the floor, right after it makes contact, it's now going to be on its way up. And on its way up, it has some initial velocity. I don't know, but eventually it's going to travel up and it's going to reach its highest point. And what's so special about its highest point, the highest point that it reaches then, the special thing about that is that we know that the velocity at that location is zero. So if I, if I frame that this is my initial velocity at the bottom, then the velocity up here when it's zero should be my final value. Okay, great. Since the ball's in the air, I also know that the acceleration is the same as that due to gravity, so negative 9.80, okay, meters per second squared. And what we are looking for is we are now looking for the velocity just after it leaves, right? So that is what I already noted there with the question. And um, do we know anything else? Well, yeah, right? It told us the height at which it reaches. It says it reaches 1.10 meters above the ground. So that's my x value, right? So now think of a formula that relates these four variables, displacement, final velocity, initial velocity, and acceleration. And oh wait, it's the same formula again, number four. So let's write it down. So the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the displacement. So the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is what we're looking for, plus two times the acceleration, which is negative 9.80. And now the displacement is a positive, ooh, positive 
sorry, positive 1.10 because the object is moving upwards. So let's clean it up a little bit. And let's combine some terms. So 2 times negative 9.8 times 1.1. So we got negative 21.6. Okay, then add the 21.6 to both sides. Add the 21.6 to both sides. That cancels. Now we're left with 21.6 is equal to initial velocity squared. Square root both sides to get rid of the square. And we find that the initial velocity here should be simply the square root of 21.6. And that works out to be 4.65. So 4.65 meters per second. And yes, perfect. Okay, so that sounds good to me. All right, so part B is now out of the way. Now let's take a look at part C. All right, so part C now is talking about, um, <clears throat> part C is talking about calculate its acceleration during contact with the floor if that contact lasts 3.5 times 10 to the minus three seconds. Okay, so uh, I'll draw another little picture here. So here's the ground. And the ball, we're taking a really microscopic look at when the ball just hits the ground and then comes back up. So when the ball just makes contact with the ground, its velocity, as we calculated in part A, its velocity is negative 5.42 meters per second. Now I know that that was the final velocity that I calculated for part A, but in terms, the, these terms are relative, meaning final and initial. So in this part of the problem, the way I'm framing it, since I'm starting the problem with this, as, it, uh, as the start of it is hitting the ground, that becomes my initial now. And then the ball is gonna bounce back up, right? So when it bounces back up, that velocity is, as we just calculated, 4.65 meters per second. So in terms of, Relative to the initial, that should be the final now. So the final velocity here is 4.65 meters per second. And now what we're looking for is we're looking for the acceleration. And they also told us that the time it takes to go from hitting the ground to bouncing back up um, was 3.50 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. So it sounds like we have enough information we need, right? We can, which formula are we gonna use here that relates all four of those variables? And it could be we could just use equation number one at the top, right? So let's write that. So the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So the final velocity here was 4.65. The initial velocity was negative 5.42. The acceleration is what we're looking for and the time was 3.50 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, great. So add the 5.42 on over, add the 5.42 on over, that cancels. So now when we do the math here, this should work out to be 10.07. Um, and now that will equal 3.50 times 10 to the minus three A. Divide this out. Divide the 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Divide the 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And now we're going to find A. I'm going to put it just down here. A is going to equal, so 10.07 divided by 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And it'll be 2.78, 2. Point, uh, excuse me, 2.87. Well, a little dyslexia there, I guess. And actually, I have to round, so 2.88, so I'm just wrong overall here. So 2.88 times 10 to the uh, minus 3, uh, excuse me, positive 3. Wow, I'm really off. <laughs> I mean, this answer is right here. I just can't speak at the moment. And that's in meters per second squared. Okay, great. So now we know the acceleration. Last but not least, finally, hopefully we'll finish this problem. Letter D now. It says, how much did the ball compress during the collision with the floor? So what, is this com what does this word compress mean in terms of a physics value here? Is it acceleration? Is it velocity based? Is it time? Or is it distance? Well, probably closest to distance, right? Or displacement. We're talking about compression, right? So it's, we're changing the length of the object. It sounds like it'd be most close, uh, most similar to a um, displacement. So now let's consider what we know. 
Now remember, we're talking about the collision. So again, the picture, we're talking about this case where the ball just hits and then comes back up. Now we already talked about all the variables. We know the initial velocity. We just wrote it down before, negative 5.42. We know the final velocity. That was 4.65. We now know the acceleration because we just calculated it, 2.88 times 10 to the 3. Okay, we also know the time of the collision. That was 3.50 times 10 to the minus 3. So we can calculate this a whole bunch of ways if we like, right? Um, we can use a bunch of formulas, but why don't we choose the, <laughs> this one seems to be a favorite of the problem, number 4. So why don't we choose that? So we got the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity here is 4.65, and that's squared. The initial velocity was negative 5.42, and that's squared. 2 times the acceleration, which was 3.5, oops, excuse me, oh, almost plugged in the time there, which is 2.88 times 10 to the minus 3. No, 10 to the third, Andrew. Man, it's getting late, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, and then multiplied by uh, the displacement of x, and that's what we're trying to find, because that x will represent how much the ball was displaced or compressed. So let's do the math. So 4.65 squared. We need 3 sig figs, so it's 21.6. Take negative... 5.42 and square it. It's positive now, right? So it comes out to 29.4. Plus then, 2 times that acceleration. So 2 times 2.88 times 10 to the third should be 5.76 times 10 to the third times x. Great. Just subtract now the 2.29.4. Subtract the 29.4, and let's see what we get. So we get 21.6 minus 29.4 comes out to negative, negative 7.8, and that will equal really 7. Point, yeah, no, actually 7.8. It's only two sig figs now. That will equal 5.76 times 10 to the third x. I'm just running out of room, but now all you would do is just divide this out of both sides. Okay. So I'm going to put the x value on over here on the side. So you're going to take negative 7.8 divided by 5.76 um, times 10 to the third. And we get an answer. I'll put it in a scientific. We get an answer of negative 1.4, okay, because we can only have two sig figs now, uh, 1.4 times 10 to the... One, two, three, minus three, and that is in meters. So that's how much the ball, let me just change that line there. That's how much the ball should be compressed. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. And uh, please, if it did, please do subscribe. And I look forward to uh, helping you next time.